Okay, um, so today I am going to explain to all of you, number one, um, about the introduction of informative speech. That will be your first assessment, which is due next week. Next week. And also uh, about, um, you know, uh, your uh, second assessment, which is informative speech. Yeah? Okay. Hold on, yeah. Okay, so I am going to explain to you about your first assessment, uh, which is due next week, and also your second assessment. Sebab your first and your second assessment need they are interrelated, which means that they are they are interrelated. You need to uh, you need to understand uh, the second assessment. So that you'll be able to do your first assessment. Okay, your first assessment, uh, you are required to video record yourself. Okay, you need to video record yourself on your introduction of your uh, informative speech. Your second assessment is basically the whole complete of informative speech. Young complete, informative speech and complete. So in your informative speech, we have introduction, we have the content, and we have the conclusion. It's like writing an essay, okay? But for your first assessment, you are required to only present the introduction, only the introduction of your speech. So body content and conclusion, you just need to present your introduction. But of course, since this one is in relation to your second speech, because your second speech, sorry, your second assessment is your informative speech, the first thing first that you need to do is to decide on the topic of your informative speech. Okay, the topic of your info, informative speech. So in order for you to decide the topic, you have to browse through lah, what are the possible topics for informative speech. Okay. Uh, so once you have decided on the topic, then you may need to work on the speech and you start first with your introduction. This is, I'm talking about the draft of your speech. It's not compulsory, but then again, when we talk about preparing a speech, of course, you need to come up with a draft. Maybe first you come up with the uh, point forms and then uh, the points ataupun, uh, in a form of uh, mind map, ke, mind mapping ke, or an outline of your speech, things that you prepare. And then the past two, you do the draft. And then, of course, there will be back and forth of you, you know, uh, looking at your speech and whatnot until you have decided this is the speech that I am going to deliver. And then you start to practice once everything is done and you have included all in, then you you record yourself, you video record yourself. So that is basically the process, okay? And this process is also applicable for the third and the fourth assessments, okay? They are also applicable for the third and fourth assessments. Juma, you only video record yourself together with your slides because you'll be using your slides and that's it, okay? Uh, uh, but I'm not going to talk in details about your second assessment yet, belum. Cuma I want you to understand what the second assessment is so that you will understand what your first assessment is. Okay? All right. So now let us talk about your... Uh, sec uh, let, uh, I'm going to share with you... Um, let's hold on, yeah. Okay, I'm going to share with you the slides and I'm going to talk to you. So this slide, the one that I have prepared is basically for, is basically for um, uh, informative speech. So we are going to look from the beginning until the end. All right. So I just hope that you can bear with me on this. Yeah. Okay. And I will share this slide inshallah later. In uh, Actually, this slide I have prepared uh, on Google Classroom. 
However, um, it will only appear for the fourth or fifth mass lecture because there are a few things that you need to understand first before you we can I can introduce the whole concept of informative speech. But then again, I realized that it's best for me to talk about the uh, about the whole concept of informative speech in the beginning so that you can quickly understand your first and your second assessment. OK, however, my emphasis is on your first assessment, which is the introduction of your speech, informative speech that is due next week. OK, all right. So nanti saya terangkan dulu pasal assessment. Then I will talk a little bit about the activities for this week and next week. Yeah. Okay. Now let us look at this uh, apa ni, uh, presentation now. Let me just click um, this one. So we're going to look. At, oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. Oh, I need to. Okay, hold on. I may need to uh, close this thing and perhaps. Yeah. I should be using. PDF after that we yeah all right okay all right so I hope you're able to view this yeah okay now we're going to look at informative speech okay and um kita start dulu lah dengan the first part that is we look at the content all right what is an informative speech types of informative speech so how to brainstorm the topic of my informative speech and how to write the introduction how to write the body content and how to write the conclusion now if you ask me mr e do we have to write the speech curve it is an optional because at the end of the day your assessment and you can submit ialah the video of your complete speech that is your second assessment the video of your introduction of your informative speech that would be your first assessment itu je you submit you do not submit to us your draft of your speech you don't submit to to me your uh, outline of your speech your uh, mind map of your speech tadde that one you keep it to yourself that is part of the process of you forming or of you uh, uh, designing your speech tapi we are we are only interested in the presentation of your informative speech as well as the introduction of your speech for assignment one as uh, assessment one and assessment two respectively yeah okay we are only interested in that so that is why um, you don't submit any written uh, assessment or any you are not doing any written assessment you are not submitting any written assignment to me because the pada assignment one assessment one right up until assessment number four everything is all about uh, the production the speaking production okay that means we just want you to video record and submit along with 27 activities that you have to do every single week uh, so far, uh, this is already week three. There are five activities that you should have done doing it. Okay, there are five activities. Okay, uh, so far lah kalau ikut sampai ke minggu tiga ni, dah ada lima. Okay, now let us start with informative speech. Now, what is an informative speech? Informative speech is a speech that tells the audience about something simple. It comes from the word info, information. That means you have something with you information you want to share with your audience simple what do you want to tell your audience about okay so the tone of your speech too it has to be neutral because you are just telling people what that thing is okay and after listening to the speech the audience will receive new information kalau dia pernah dengar information tu either they, they will be added up with more information or they will be enlightened with new and recent information Itu sahaja. Okay. And then some of the samples of the topic, like for example, my favorite singer or how to prepare for a catastrophic emergency. What is play truant and how to solve it? What is augmented reality AI? Banyak. A lot of topics can be used as informative speech. Yeah. So you decide. So nanti later, together with your group members, you have to sit down and decide because this is individual assessment. Our assessments are all done individually. I repeat, all assessments are done individually. 
So if there are 30 of you in the group, there should be 30 different topics. Do I get myself clear? 30 different topics of informative speech. Kalau ada 25 orang, 25 different topics of informative speech. Tak boleh sama. So that's why you need to sit down. I'm pretty sure at this point, you have already had with you a group, a WhatsApp group. Don't include me in in your WhatsApp group. But you dengan kawan-kawan you dah ada WhatsApp group. So in your WhatsApp group, please decide who does what topic. Okay, so that you won't be presenting the same, the same topic. Okay, and if you were to look at the given samples, these are samples of topics. Tapi you pikirlah, you katakan, I want to talk about pencil. I want to talk about car. You are already doing degree program. Akan you nak cerita benda-benda yang orang mungkin dah tahu. So, how informative is that if people have known about it? Betul tak? So, you may want to find a little bit different. Something that may be new to people, new to the audience, I don't know. Tapi, not to a point nanti, when you want to do your speech and you want to find information about the topic of your speech, you susah nak cari information tersebut. Because it's too new, tak ada ramai yang cerita ataupun not many materials or sources available, especially online. Pun no point juga. As much as I am encouraging you to be different when it comes to the speech, the topic of your speech, you must also remember and bear in mind that how, how interesting and unique the topic is, you must be able to find information, able to find materials, able to find sources to support your speech. So, ada dua concerns kat sini lah. You want to be a bit different? Takkanlah semua nak cerita pasal kereta sahaja. So, maybe one, maybe some of you want to talk about something else. And the level of your information to has to be at, on par with you, your level. A degree student, undergrad. Undergrad tak cerita pasal pencil. They don't talk about pencil, they don't talk about cars. Small kids, perhaps, yes. Because we want to improve their proficiency. But when it comes to your level, we just want you to be able not only to, to, to help with your pronunciation, with your spoken part, the, your, your, your speaking ability, but also we want to gauge the way you represent, uh, the way you talk about the, the content. Yeah? Okay. So I hope you understand the whole concept of informative speech. Okay? Now, there are a few types lah. Kita ada descriptive, demonstrative, explanatory, and definition. Okay? Kita tengok satu satu. If it is a descriptive, informative speech, that means a speaker described from the word describe. That's the verb, yeah? A person, a place, thing, methods. We look at examples here. My favorite singer, you're describing your singer. The one thing that I bring to sleep every night, you're describing that one thing. Place that I love to go during summer. Places that you like to go during summer, during monsoon season, during uh, school holidays, semester break, you know, you are describing the place. Your topic can also be demonstrative. Uh, you demonstrate. That means you are showing to people how that thing is done. For example, how to prepare a catastrophic emergency. This is why you don't demonstrate, but you let people know what are the ways, what are the things that you can do uh, during a catastrophic emergency. Ataupun you are, you are demonstrating to people how to change a flat tire or how to bake cookies. So this falls under demonstrative informative speech. Kita the explanatory and I'm pretty sure most of you will be using this kind of informative speech ataupun your topics will fall under this category where you explain about something so we have like what is play truant and how to solve it the effects of burning the midnight oil the 21st century learning what and how you know so this is explanatory informative speech and the last one is definition like you use the i think most of you color you use terminologies it falls under this category uh, augmented reality ataupun hitagogy ataupun the new economic model those are terminologies you want to explain about it so whichever topic that you choose that you choose sorry surely it will fall in either of this category okay 
But if you ask me, this is just me telling you so that you can brainstorm. Ada setengah orang tak go through ni pun. Dia terus dia pilih satu topik and this will be my informative topic. Pun boleh. As long as you have a topic and as long as the topic is not the same with the rest of your group members. Now, once you dah ada topic, you must be able to develop all of these four. Four stages, you know. you These are the ways that you can actually, you can actually brainstorm. Stages or ways that you can brainstorm a topic. Tapi the sim simplest and easiest way for you to, to come up with a topic for your informative speech is for you to search on the internet. Simple type, sample or topics for informative speech. There will be a list of them. But some students, they prefer not to do that. They prefer to come up with their own. And these are the steps that you can actually employ. The first one is to develop general purpose. And... If this, is a, if this is an informative speech, of course, your general purpose is to inform. Simple. Specific purpose is where you want to inform what to the audience. What do you want to inform to the audience? Central idea is where you mention three things that your audience will get upon listening to your, to your speech. Now, why three? Why not four? Why not five? Because when you write your body content, you just need three main points sahaja for each body content. Because normally it's a five paragraph essay where you have your introduction, three body content, and one conclusion. Sama je, speech, sama macam essay. So you need three points. But if you ask me, Mr. E, can I have more than three points? Can I have four? Can I have five? Boleh. The more, the merrier. But remember, you still have limitation of time. So you need to consider that as well. So count that in. Yeah? Okay, so let us look at some of these samples here. Number one, general purpose is to inform. As I mentioned to you, specific purpose, what do you want to inform to your audience? So specific purpose is to inform my audience about how to improve one's proficiency in English. So when you have the word how, automatically this will fall under the category of demonstrative informative speech. And then one can improve his or her proficiency in English. This is your, kalau kita pergi balik tadi, central idea. Okay? The third one is your central idea. Central idea must be written in one sentence. I repeat, sentence. central idea must be written in one sentence that includes three main points. That includes three main points. Okay? So let us look at the example here. One can improve his or her proficiency in English by number one, listening to English songs, number two, watch English movies, and number three, read English newspapers. So these are the three main points. Everything is written in one sentence. And what would be your topic? Three ways to improve one's proficiency in English. That would be your topic. So in order for you to develop your topic, you may want to, to go through this to go through this process or stages or levels, okay? Ada yang terus cari topic from the internet, okay. That means you dah ada yang nombor empat ni lah, you put that. Then you have to work backwards. That means you kena fikirkan dia punya ni. Because in your introduction, you must have your central idea, wajib. In your introduction, mesti ada central idea. So that is why you need to go through the process. Because once you have you have gotten the process, you go through the process, you dah ada you punya uh, in, uh, central idea that you later will be used. It will be used in your introduction. Now, let us... So I will stop at writing the introduction, yeah? I will stop at writing the introduction because I want you to focus on uh, the concept of speech, your second assessment to concept saja. I'm not going to explain in details. And then how to write your introduction. Itu saja, because your first assessment has to do with the introduction. So this is you trying to, to write your introduction. Now, your introduction should consist of the following. All of these must be in your introduction. Number one, there should be an attention grabber. Nanti kita tengok satu satu. What is an attention grabber? Number two, establish credibility. Number three, greetings. Number four, there must be topic and the central idea. Tu yang saya cakap tadi, you must have your central idea. So if you do, if if you don't go through the process, 
yang those four levels just now, you won't be able to generate your own central idea. So that is why you need to go through that. Even if you have found the topic on the internet, just put at the last level, but you you work you work backwards. That means you after you have the topic, then you start to think of the general idea. Uh, sorry, uh, the the central idea. Then you go to specific purpose. Then general purpose. General purpose is nang jela to inform. Okay. All right. So these are the things, yeah, aspects to be included in your introduction. Now let us look at the given sample. So have you ever imagined talking in English fluently like a native? So that would be your attention grabber. So have you ever imagined talking in English fluently like a native speaker? A rhetorical question. A rhetorical question is one of the attention grabbers or attention getters. All right? So kita ada macam-macam jenis. Nanti kita go through. So this one yang sample ni is using um, rhetorical question. Now, what is a rhetorical question? If I were to ask this question to my audience, will I expect them to answer? Yes, but in their hearts. That means they jawab je hati. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I pernah lah to imagine kalau I cakap bahasa Inggeris, sangat bagus, very fluent. Oh, I pernah terfikir jugalah. Okay? Tapi you, you, when you ask this question in your speech, you don't wait, you don't pause so that they can respond. Maybe pause a little just for them to think and and ponder. Tuja. Okay? We may have that feeling whenever we watch an English or TV series. I myself at times feel that way too. So you establish your credibility. That means you're associating with your audience. When you watch English movies, you see people talk English fluently and you feel like macam, oh, how I wish I can speak as good as he is. Betul tak? Itu, itu your rhetorical question tadi. And it happens to us most of the time. Sometimes when I speak English, there were few people who were in the audience ask me, eh, how come eh, you speak good English? Oh, how I wish I can speak like you, like Elias, macam tu. So sometimes we also have that feeling, so yeah? So, yang the blue color tu is where you establish your credibility. But I know for sure feeling about it isn't enough. Yang putih tu elaboration lah. You elaborate because it's your introduction kan. So, I have to do something to catch that dream. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings mesti ada. Today, I would like to talk about topic plus central idea. Three ways in improving one's proficiency in English. And they are watching English movies, listening to English songs, and reading English newspapers. Now, transition is the last sentence where you want to transit from your introduction to your first body content. That is what we call transitional sentence. Now, let us start with the first way, and that is watching English movies that can help to improve your proficiency in English. Now, this is a sample. Of course, it looks short. But in your real speech, it will be lengthened. Dia akan panjanglah sedikit. Okay? Uh, because this is just a sample. But you must have all elements in your introduction. And I'll be looking at this. Ataupun your assessor will be looking at this when they are assessing your, your introduction. Okay? So let us look at types of attention grabbers. So we have rhetorical question, which was done just now. It had the quotations, facts, humors, proverbs and idiom, story and history. Ini dah masuk body content. You can type on you uh, on on uh, website on the website. You can search for these attention grabbers or attention getters. Ada yang start dengan quotation. Ada yang start with facts. Ada yang start with humors. Ada yang start with proverbs and idioms. You can bring a horse to a river, ladies and gentlemen. But you can never force the horse to drink the water in the river. That is, of course, a proverb that my late father used to tell me whenever he wanted to motivate me. So that is how you, you gain the attention of your audience by sharing a proverb. Or you tell them a story, but a short story, yeah? not a very long story, to a point it takes most of the time of your Presentation. Tak boleh, because this is not a storytelling. This is an oral presentation. Or maybe you reveal a bit of historical facts. Ke. So these are 
the types of attention grabbers yang yang ada yang available ada banyak lagi there are many more that's why i said i ask you to go and and search for it there will be more okay maybe new ones we can never know so that is why if you examined closely your uh apa ni your activities for this week and next week they are to help you with the attention grabbers so those activities actually kalau you tengok satu persatu activities yang you kena buat for week 3 and week 4 they are where you you are doing like a like a uh, apa ni orang kata macam a practice of your introduction you hanya tukar-tukar dia punya attention grabber so if i if, kalau you tengok uh, contohnya eh, let me check first Okay, I need to open up the, uh, apa? Okay, if you were to look at uh, week three punya activities that you are supposed to do, yeah? That is, sorry, that are activity number four, activity number five, where you will need to do an introduction, introduction to speech, but you are playing around with the attention uh, getter. So, untuk yang, yang the activity number four, you are playing around with anecdote or rhetorical question or humor. You have to choose eh, as your attention grabber. Kalau activity number five, you change pula with statistics, quotations or arousing curiosity. Okay? Uh, ni semua tak ada dalam saya slide eh, arousing curiosity. I listed only things that I know and quite prominent or famous. But there are many a lot, there are many attention getters available. You can search online. You can look at the samples. You can look at the uh, sample videos, how people do it. You know, this one is self-study lah eh. And also for next week pun ada juga activity 6 and 7. Sama juga. Activity 6 and 7, this time around you change to um, rhetorical questions. Kalau macam you dah buat tadi rhetorical questions, then now you change to anecdote ke ataupun humor ke. Uh, 7 pun sama. Kalau you dah, uh, minggu lepas you dah, maksudnya minggu week 3 lah, you dah buat statistics. So, minggu number 4 tu you do quotations ke. Okay, this is just you playing around. Tapi, the rest can remain the same. So, let me share ni eh. Ah, uh, yang this one. Yang bagian atas ni saja. The one colored in yellow ni saja itu kah attention getter. So this one is rhetorical question. Now I change this part, then I use pula. Ah, uh, saya pakai pula apa tu? Uh, I I use um, uh, macam tadi dia cakap. Uh, I change to anecdote contohnya ataupun to humor. Ah, uh, tapi yang lain, the rest remains the same. From we ini until the end remains the same. You dah siap. Cuma bahagian uh, attention getter or attention grabber tu saja you, you manipulate based on each activities. So, we have basically four activities, two to be done this week, another two to be done next week. Okay, and all of these four activities, they are in relation to your first assessment, which is your introduction to your informative speech. Sorry, the introductory paragraph of your informative speech. Ataupun introduction of your informative speech. Okay. So, you have to complete all four activities ni lah before you can submit your your assignment next week. Uh, as a first assessment, which is your introduction. So, once you dah, dis, dah play along uh, ataupun dah buat four activities ni, then you will decide lah which retor, uh, attention getter that you are fond of that you want to use for your first assessment which is in the introduction of your informative speech. Then you record juga. You record lah video tu. And you submit. Uh, and then you submit next week. Okay. So I hope you you understand what I'm explaining about uh, the second assessment. I'm not going to go into body content and conclusion. Saya tak masuk eh. I don't want to go into that. I just want to focus on introduction dah dulu. Okay, introduction. Because nanti dah masuk body content and conclusion, that one will be your second assessment, which is your first speech.
Okay, the complete informative speech. And kalau you tanya second assessment tu, kena buat lagi sekali ke introduction tu? Of course lah. Kenalah start balik daripada introduction. Walaupun you kata, tapi dah buat dah. Uh, of course, itu dah first assessment ni, second assessment dia complete. Mesti start balik lah dengan introduction tersebut. Tapi bila you nak start balik introduction tersebut, your assessor will give feedback upon assessing your introduction or your introduction of your speech tu, your first assessment, they will be assessing them, assessing it, they will give some comments and feedback. I will let you know what are the comments. So based on that comment, tapi you will not be commented individually, tak ada. Sebab we have so many students taking this course master ni. So we are not able to comment or give feedback individually, in person, tak boleh. We will be looking at what are the common mistakes done by the students. We'll give general comments and feedback. And based on that, you have a look at your introduction once again. If you need to improve your introduction untuk your second assessment pula, which is the complete of informative speech. Faham eh? Uh, so I'm going to stop here only. So in my recording session ni, or in today's session ni, I have recorded uh, basically, I have explained about your first assessment, that is the introduction of your speech. And I have also explained about the four activities and you're going to work this week and next week. But of course, next week punya activities and next week punya submission of your assignment, they belum publish lagi dekat Google Classroom. Because I have to wait until next week for you to do. This week, you just focus in completing the activity number Three, eh, sorry, number four and number five. Activities number four and number five for this week. And if you have not completed your first three activities for week one and week two, you still need to do it. I have extended the deadline here yeah, to 18 and 19 of April next week, respectively. Depending lah, if your mass lecture is on Tuesday, then it will be until 19. If your mass lecture is on Monday, then it will be until 18. Okay, 18th of April. So I have extended. Tapi after today, after this week, no more extension for the activities. Okay, dah tak ada lagi dah extensions for the activities, yeah? Okay, so I am going to put on hold. Do you have any question to ask? If you do, I don't want you to ask me verbally. You can type it out if you have questions. Okay, if you have questions, you can type it out in your message, in your chat. Okay, now, um, I will just click stop sharing, yeah, because I need to stop sharing. And then while waiting, if let's say there's questions from, from, from you lah. And also, uh, record too, I have to stop. All right, let me stop.